Hello and welcome to the new episode. Today we are going to learn and understand how to connect Tailwind with React and what is it that Tailwind and why we need it. First of all, we'll just briefly create some folder and inside that folder create something like just give me a uh, going terminal and here we're gonna create normal npx create react app and dot to create inside the folder that i'm currently in our react application because it will take some time i will briefly show you with what we are going to struggle today because at the very beginning that can be quite tricky everything's working it should go and today we are going to work with Tailwind CSS, which is, in my opinion, one of the best CSS framework that we can use with, for example, React. Whenever we are not good with styling and we don't have any ideas, Tailwind is there for us. And whenever you understand the basics of Tailwind, you understand why it's so common and a lot, a lot of people love to use it. First of all, the documentation of the Tailwind is quite clean and not messy. Because whenever you just go to docs, you can change the version of the documentation. Of course, you've got here how to install it and how to manage it. But whenever you are lazy, you can go to framework guides and here you can just adjust it to your framework. Whenever, for example, we are creating create React apps, that's why we are going there. You will be using next, go there. Angular, go there. I don't know. Nuxt, go there. There are a lot, a lot, a lot of options. Whenever you just go there, you see how to create that. As you can see, it does not support, but don't worry. The all things that we need to do is to create that inside the React. Of course, there are some kind of things that will not work as it should because uh, it's more created in the newer version for Next.js. But for learning purposes, if you are not familiar with Next.js or so wide or something like that, you should just go and follow along how I do. And about documentation, you can just go to the components, for example, and inside the components, you can get the whole components from the website. For example, we would like to have some headers, hero sections, and we can copy the code. And here we can choose for React or Vue and get it from the website. Of course, there are a lot, a lot, a lot of them more available, but some of them are the, you have to pay for them just. And like the price, as you can see, it's not as low as we would thought. But whenever you create a lot, a lot of website and you understand the tailwind, it can pay off. Okay, going back to our tailwind, because whenever you just go to, for example, components in some other documentation, you will have the components like header, how to create it and how to make it. But here we need to focus at the very beginning, for example, at the layout and how to create that layout. And you can see the examples over there, how to make it work. Of course, there are flexbox grids, typography, sizing, and all of that W-O symbols we'll just go through. So don't worry, everything I'll try to explain you as much as I can. Going back to our tailwind documentation and here with the framework guides, we need to go now create React app. And whenever our React app is ready, as you can see, in my case, it's ready. We need to install our tailwind. So npm install dash d tailwind css 
okay, whenever it's going to be installed, we need a few more things because first of all, we need npx tailwind tailwind CSS in it to initialize our tailwind config.js file. And here, whenever you are inside the web browser, you just need to copy that content to add the path to the Tailwind CSS. So here we just copy and paste it. Also, and there's another thing in the index.css, we need to copy it as well. And then going back and inside our source, inside the index CSS, we need to get it there. And we are ready just right now to create our first Tailwind layout project or something like that. We'll just create very, very, very simple one. Okay, first of all, what we'll need, we'll need to create the folder called components to make it clear. And we'll just create three components and I will explain you what they are about. First of all, will be some kind of header. The next will be some banner. And for example, as all, almost all website, we need also some input form to that JS. So we are going to start from the top. So I mean from the header. And to create the project, we need first of all import React, then const to create our function. Remember to send it, so export. And here we need to make uh, some magic. Remember, whenever you're creating something in Hellwind, you don't have to create some kind of import more things. You don't have to. You got everything that we need in that case here because we created that Tailwind configuration and it knows how to work with it. Okay, and we will just create some header with class name, as always. We created, for example, it will be my website. And of course, we need header as well there. And there, we'll just get background, blue, and here we've got some values from the blue from 100 usually to 900. In our case, it will be 500. Text will be white. Text will be extra large. And we'll make some padding to look it better. Of course, we can go to our application here. We can just adjust it a little bit, but we don't need to. We can create header, get that header, save it, and right now, npm start. Wait a few seconds till our application will start running. And our development server is running. And as you can see, my website header is completed. With the few lines of code, we've got quite a good looking header that works as we should with or without any hesitation. So it's very good to start. The next thing will be maybe a little, little more complex because we'll just create banner. And here inside the banner, we'll just create, first of all, the banner will have class name as before, BG for background, gray and 200, for example. Inside the Tailwind website, you can see all of the colors and the values that you can use. But whenever you are trying to find out the good red or orange in some, in, in some kind of hexadecimal values, it can be messy whenever you are not very, very interested in front end. So Tailwind do that for you. Feed 10, for example, and text will be center. Center. And here, we'll just provide two texts. And I will show you the difference, how it will look. Class name, the H1 will be text. It will be 3XL and font 
will be bold. So we'll just make it more visible. Welcome to my, my website. And also we'll make some not plugins, but P tag. Here is a simple banner using Tailwind CSS. And here, that's all that we need to do. And inside the file, we just create the banner. Whoa, I need to import it as well. So import banner from components. And with that few lines of code, as you can see, our banner works as it should. So it's simple as that, that whenever you are creating some basic concept, concepts, that's what I would like to tell you, is to know how to create the background, how to create some padding, or for example, we can go with margin, but you should know the basic difference between padding and margin, how big text should be, if it should be bigger or large or smaller, also, if it should go to the center, we can change it to your needs. So that's the very basics of Tailwind. Right now, we'll just dive maybe a little bit, a bit deeper inside the Tailwind CSS because we are going to create some kind of import form. Here, we will need more divs, some kind of label, we'll stick with the very, 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 very basic concepts, but to get as much as we can from that. Okay, so we've got the main div, which will have some kind of class name, and that class name will be it then because we'll need some kind of padding from the elements that we are going to have. Of course, as I mentioned before, we've got the padding, so div, Okay, but here we can also have last name of margin, for example, for, of course, there is margin top and, but in our case, we'll stick with margin button. So you don't have to type everything like margin, uh, 20 pixel or something like that. You just read MP4 and also in the documentation, it will tell you how much it does make that margin for you. Then whenever we've got our margin created, we'll create label because it our input form. It's not in the form, but we'll just call it for that case as an input form. It's our label and here we will just create class name and we would like to behave as a block we would like to have text also, as always, as before, you can create as in the background. We'll just have gray 700. As you remember before, we, instead of text, use BG. And we have to know and understand only that concept of color hue. Text will be small. Font will be also bold. And we'll just create some margin. And of course, we can use HTML4 username. And here, we'll just create username. And with that in mind, I will just go to my application. And here, I will import input form. And wait a few seconds till my websites. Oh, come on. You have to recreate yourself and we've got our username create our dog but it's the very basic so we need the inputs and to create input of course we can create a, a separate file but in our case we'll just stick there inside that file okay it's self closing we have to remember and class name here first of all Whenever you are trying to look more stylish here, for example, input, you will have to know a lot, a lot of basic like box shadowing, how that, how to create that box and how to create that shadow, how many pixels it should go inside the tailwind. You just create the 
variable like shadow. And here we can go to appearance, none. If you would like to have border, then border, because we would like to have that round width. So how width it should be, we'll just go with full. UI, we should go to two and PX for also three. Text, gray as before, we'll just go to 700. And we need also, whenever we've got our text gray, we've got our P paddings, we will go to leaning type. That's the option that you can find easily inside the documentation. And focus, for example, whenever we are outside, would like to have outline on and focus. Whenever we are focused, we should have shadow outline. And I guess that's the all options that we need. And you can copy and paste and use that input form in your case. Of course, we will just create ID username. Oh, come on, it's self-closing. Type. Type. Text. Of course, place holder should be like username. Save it. Going back to our website. And here, as you can see, we've got our working project. As you can see, whenever I just my mouse go over, it gets shadowed. So we created the first one, but whenever we would like to have more, of course, we can just copy and paste it. So create much, much more of them. Whenever we will just copy and paste. Right now, I will just create the password. 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 And here, we will just create some asterisks. It's the same option that we created before. As you can see, we've got that shadow outline like visible in that menu. And we can write down whenever we would like to have inside our application. So the last thing that is very important whenever you're creating some kind of imp, very easy input form is to create the button. And here with that button, I will show you the basics of the flex box. So inside our class name, we need to initialize our flex. And then we just center it and justify between to make it work as you would like to have. Whenever we are inside the button, and because as I mentioned, we are going to create a button, it will be like sign in. And here we are going to have class name BG blue 500 and background blue 500. Whenever we hover, you don't have to create the CSS like class that when hover, when something like that, you simply put that in the class name. So it's very, very awesome. Whenever we hover BG blue. For example, 900 to show you the difference. Text will be white as well. Font bold. Also some paddings. It should be rounded. And I guess type will be something for round. But we are not creating right now the form. So in our manner, it's not the big deal. But whenever our case is working, you can see that whenever we hover at the bottom, it's work as it should. So that's all for that very basic Tailwind CSS tutorial. Whenever you've got some questions how to work with Tailwind, go to the documentation and here you'll have almost everything visible like flex, how to select items, 
how you can just, for example, grid them. Uh, just give me a second. Oh, there's a grid template columns, how you can create it and what properties there are. Also, you, what you can go to the, with the text documentation, whenever we are going to find out the color and we, for example, have some kind of text color, we can just get the fonts and with the colors, as you can see, how that color will look like. And there are a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of things that are available with that documentation. And I hope you enjoy it and you will try the Tailwind with your React application and create something custom. And that will be all for that video. And see you in the next one. Bye.